How's it going everyone? And in this video, we're gonna be walking through how you can set up your own dedicated personal DNS ad blocking server. And so we're gonna be using AWS and specifically EC2 to provision a instance for us that'll be running in the cloud. And as long as you stay within that free tier, you'll be able to do all this stuff for free. So you won't even need to buy a Raspberry Pi, which is pretty cool. And a little bit of background here is that basically what's going on is that we are treating our custom DNS server as a way to not return IP addresses or to give bogus IP addresses to requests for ads. So when you're on your phone and you're going to like YouTube and YouTube's trying to load an ad, it's basically trying to get the IP address of a server that has the ads on it. So by having a personal DNS server that you control, you can say that for the known list of DNSs that return ads like Google ad services, that it's not going to return those. So Google really doesn't like this. They'll probably demonetize me, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> I don't even care anymore, but we'll get started. So um, basically I will provide documentation of this stuff and we are going to be starting now. So I'm at the AWS console and I've already created my own account. Um, if you haven't, just make one and I'm going to go to EC2, or you can just type in EC2 right here to basically spin up your own personal virtual server in the cloud. Uh, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this launch instance button and click it again. And uh, they're going to tell me that I can either do the old experience or go to the new experience. I'll do the new experience just because they're going to deprecate the old one soon anyways. I'm going to give this thing a name. You can call it whatever you'd like. I'm going to be descriptive. I'm going to call this the Pi-hole DNS server, okay? And then it's going to ask us what type of operating system we wanna have on this. So I'm gonna choose Ubuntu and make note how they have this little free tier eligible notice right there, which is cool. I'm going to be specifically going with the uh, 20.04 version. So as long as you make sure that it's free tier eligible, uh, you should be good as long as you don't wanna pay money. Um, and we're going to keep the architecture what it is. We're going to go with the T2 micro family of instances because that's how we're able to stay on this freeze here. I'm going to uh, decide to make a new key pair just to show you guys what this process is like. We're gonna call this the VS Pi-hole key pair. And you can keep all these default settings uh, as is. We're gonna click on create. You need to know or you need to have this PEM file if you intend on connecting to your instance from the local machine. So from this, in my case, a Windows computer right now, I need to have this file, but I'm gonna be showing you guys how to bypass that anyways. Um, and then when we get to network settings, uh, you can see how they have this option. It's, it's different from the old way, but um, you can just click on this edit box right here and um, you give it a name. So I'm gonna call this the VS Pi-hole DNS server set group security group and what we want is we want to make sure that we are enabling ssh traffic from anywhere so that means that you know people can actually ssh into your uh server if they wanted to although that should really just be you so if this was a production environment you would change this to only like your known ip address um, we also want to add in some additional security rules so i'm going to say i want http traffic and that uses the TCP protocol on port 80. And what I want is I want this to be able to come from anywhere because I wanna be able to serve HTTP requests that come from anyone. That's how people are going to connect to this DNS server. Uh, and then in addition to that, we're gonna have two more rules. If you just type in DNS, it pulls up this guy. So we want DNS UDP. Again, we're going to have to say that because this is a DNS server it has to be able to serve DNS traffic. Um, and uh, we also need the other DNS type as well. So DNS TCP and again, anywhere. So these are all the security settings. If you wanted to make it so that only you could connect to your DNS server, which, you know, in my case, if I'm doing this personally, I would, I would set that to like my IP right now. Um, and that way, you know, I can share this IP address with people, but they wouldn't connect because they would just get network timeouts when they when they try. Um, but in my case, just to show you guys, if you want to be able to share this with people, you'd set this to anywhere. Um, so these settings are all good. So SSH anywhere, T HTTP anywhere, DNS UDP anywhere, DNS TCP anywhere. These are the settings you need to have, otherwise it will not work right. So make sure you do this the right way, uh, otherwise you'll have issues. And then also I recommend giving this thing a name so that down the road, if you wanted to spin up an additional 
DNS server, you can do that. Uh, and it just makes reusing it easier. Um, so, yep, so we're good with our firewall or our, our security groups. Uh, in terms of the instant storage, uh, they by default give you eight gigs. You have up to 30 gigs per month, uh, or 30 gigs free of, on the free tier. Um, but honestly, the the Ubuntu and the Pi-hole service, they're not going to need more than eight. So you can, you're good just leaving this as is. Um, and then we're not going to be changing anything under advanced details. So and user data is where you could, in theory, if you wanted to have like a load balancer and spin up tons of these guys, uh, have a little script that would run at boot time, but we're not gonna do that. So we're not changing anything on the uh, advanced stuff. So leave everything as is, and then we're gonna click on launch instance. And so right now it's beginning to start this guy and it's initiating the launch. That doesn't mean it's necessarily launched yet, but if I go to view instances here, um, I made a test one previously, um, but we don't need to look at that for now. Uh, but this guy right here is the one that's in this pending state. That means that it is beginning to spin up. Um, and then if we click on this little refresh guy right here, you can see that's still in this pending state. So we'll just give it a minute uh, before it comes online. All right, so it wasn't too bad, but uh, here we go. So we now have our PyHole DNS server. And if you click on the instance ID, if you click on a connect in the top right corner, they actually make it really easy for you. So if you go to EC2 instance connect, it's going to assume the Ubuntu username because that's what the image had on it by default. If you just click connect here, it doesn't matter if you're on a Mac, a, a Windows, or you know an Ubuntu operating system, this is loading in the browser a session with this uh, EC2 instance that we just created, which is great, so we don't have to even care about it. Um, and so now what we're going to do is we're going to run some commands to uh, first update all the packages that we can get. So we're gonna run sudo apt update just like this and this can take some time so just let it be alrighty and then what we're going to do is we're going to run sudo apt upgrade dash y this again can take some time so just give it a little bit Okay, we're almost finished. All right, so now we're done. And so the next thing we're going to do here is that we are going to uh, run this next command and uh, all these will be in the description. So don't worry if you can't remember them. Um, but I'm just going to paste this guy into there. So we're basically going on this command, we're going to be uh, copying the download or the installer for PyHole, and then we're going to be piping that into Bash directly. So basically, it's going to be initiating the install of the download that we're getting to actually get the PyHole service running on this little EC2 instance that we just spun up. So I'm going to hit Enter, and you can see it takes us to this little page, and it's going to start running through some little startup scripts. And it gives you a nice little uh, UI, which is pretty cool. Um, so basically the way you navigate this is you hit enter on your keyboard. So uh, we're going to hit okay. And we're just going to acknowledge that they are a free service, but they do accept donations and I very much appreciate them. And this server also needs a static IP address. So um, they're telling you this because if you had a, for instance, a Raspberry Pi that was hooked up to your home network, uh, if you had a DHCP server that was changing the IP address, that wouldn't work because when a device tries to call, like if my phone tried to call a, a Raspberry Pi server that had a DHCP address, its IP address is gonna keep on changing, so it's gonna not always be able to find the Raspberry Pi server, so it would defeat the whole purpose of this thing. So basically you have to make sure it has a static IP. When we're on EC2, uh, it does have static IP addresses, so like you can see the public IPv4 uh, address right here. Um, and there's also this private IPv4 address, and that's the AWS gateway uh, when you're on the VPC that this thing is running on. Um, but for our purposes, what really matters here is this public IPv4 address, um, but it is static. So that's that's all we need to know right now. Um, so we're just gonna hit continue, so we don't have to worry about that. And then in terms of the upstream DNS server, so basically this guy is not going to remember every single uh, IP address out there, or it's not gonna have a lookup for everything. So it's basically saying, you know, who to default to when it doesn't know what to do next. You can choose Google, um, but you also have a nice set of options here. Uh, Quad9 does a good amount of uh, privacy filtering and all that kind of stuff too. So um, your choice, I'm gonna go with Google, but you can pick whatever you'd like, depending on how much security or privacy you wanna have. 
um, and then we're going to uh, be prompted if we are okay with the default block ad sites uh, or the, the lists. So it's basically determining like Google ad services dot star or whatever, you know, the lists that are associated with returning IP addresses that render ads. Um, so that list is maintained by uh, a certain set of people. And so like Stephen Black's unified host list is one of them uh, and it's pretty good. So I'm just gonna stick with the defaults now, but we can always add in more later if we would like. So I'm just gonna hit yes. And then do we wanna install the web, the admin web interface? Yes. Uh, and we're going to need to have a web server. So we're going to be installing an additional service onto this little EC2 box that we have to do that. And we're just saying we're okay with that. And do we want to enable query logging? In our case, the answer is yes, because only I am going to be using this. Um, but if you expected other people to be doing that, you just want to check with them if they're okay with the fact that you'd be able to see some of their traffic or all of their traffic for that matter. Um, so I'm going to hit yes. Um, but again, your choice. Uh, and then we're going to select privacy modes. I'm going to go with uh, showing everything because that's how we're going to be doing our, our tracking to make sure that we're actually blocking ads from the right domains. And then basically it's going to run through, uh, it's going to come back to our shell and it's just going to keep on running through these installs. So we're just going to give it a few more moments. And for some reason, I, I ran into this issue uh, both times I've done this, um, where it gives us this time until retry and it takes a bunch of time. Um, so what I do here is I basically just hit control C on the terminal to abort the install or setup. And then I just basically rerun this entire command. And it's going to say it already knows that I've installed this before. So um, I'm just going to go to reconfigure and run through this process again. Um, and hopefully you guys don't have to deal with this stuff, but it's literally just going through all the same options. Um, we're just hitting yes to everything. <laughs> uh, so continue. And hopefully the second time around, it doesn't need to go through that whole time retry thing. And it doesn't. So um, if you run into that and you don't want to wait two minutes, you can just hit command or control C and uh, it'll do that for you. Um, so make note now that we have uh, successfully got our install done. So I'm going to uh, see how they're trying to tell you your IPv4 address right now. Um, so in if you're using EC2 Instance Connect, which I recommend, uh, they do tell you the public IP address and the private IP address of your particular uh, Raspberry Pi uh, Pi hole DNS server. Uh, so you don't necessarily need to always remember that. Um, and it's also telling you that the admin web page login password hasn't been changed yet. So again, if this is something you plan on sharing or developing or using in any kind of production environment, I do recommend actually uh, adding a password to that. And I can show you guys how to do that in just a sec. But we're just gonna hit okay to say that we are done. Um, and now for that very important password part. Um, so if you run the command pihole dash a space dash p, uh, this is going to let you enter a password. And in my case, you know, I'll do password all lowercase. Um, and that's because I'm gonna just delete this thing as soon as we're done with this video. But um, yeah, so now we have a new password set. And so if you're like me and you're like, wow, this is super cool. And um, you know, if you're also looking at this, they're saying view the web interface at uh, pihole.admin. And that's only if you're on your local network, but um, because we're using this EC2 box, uh, it's telling us to go to this site. And you're going to be in for a rude awakening because if we go here and then we click on a new tab and then we paste that guy in, um, it's going to try to call this IP address, but this IP address only exists within the VPC of your AWS account. So you're going to be sitting here wondering why it's not loading. And the reason for that is because your EC2 instance has this public IPv4 address um, and we're trying to call this private IPv4 address. So that's why it's not loading. Um, so you're gonna sit here and you're gonna wonder what you did wrong. And the answer is that actually what you need to do is you need to go to your public IP address for this guy and call it directly. And then do the forward slash admin to go to that admin console. And this is when you will get uh, a response from the page. And um, if you go to the lab login thing, um, it should prompt me for the password, which it did. And I'm going to type that in and hit login. And so now we are at the admin password, I'm sorry, we're at the admin page uh, for our Raspberry Pi uh, or Pi hole service that's running on EC2 now. So if we were to give this specific IP address, 
220, 112, 93 to services like my phone when I go into settings and configure a custom or manual override on the DNS server, I'm going to be able to be blocking the ads on my phone through this DNS server that I now own and maintain on AWS. So uh, that is how you can get started using Pi-hole on EC2 with AWS. We're on the free tier right now, uh, so everything's free. You don't even have to buy a Raspberry Pi, which I know is expensive because of this chip shortage. Um, but I do want to make note that uh, the free tier has limits and it's only free tier for that first year after you've made your AWS account. And then in addition to that, there's a set amount of bandwidth uh, or, or amount of traffic that your free tier is eligible for, and that's 100 gigs. Um, so if you don't want to get charged AWS bills, just make sure you're staying within those limits. And you know, in the long run, maybe it's even cheaper to have a Raspberry Pi, but to just get started and seeing if this even works for you, um, this is how you can do it. I hope this is helpful stuff. Thank you all for watching. Let me know if you have any questions, and I'll talk to you guys next time.